people were uh, labeled as barons, as, as deviant, disgusting savages, because they accumulated all the wealth. And under a gold system, uh, there's only a limited amount of growth, and any economist will tell you that. That's why we can no longer go back. If we go back, we would be setting what we have started already backwards, and I don't think that this uh, particular society or any society that has uh, uh, basically embraced the fractional reserve uh, uh, banking system uh, you know, I don't think that they're going to be prepared for the implications of such a radical notion of bringing back the gold standard. No, I, I hear you. I'm, de I'm just thinking about, like, quantitative easing, for instance, how that devalues the currency already in, in circulation. Would you agree? That well, that's an this is the big you know, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, the biggest misconception about the Federal Reserve and central banks is that they have some vested interest and uh, debasing the currency or debasing the money supply. Uh, the only uh, job of the Federal Reserve is to maintain a fiscal and, well, not necessarily fiscal, but a sound monetary system. And what's unfortunate right. is that our government obligates uh, us and they obligate our tax dollars to all these uh, wars, they, they, they expand, you know, government programs, uh, you know, they give money to all these countries, uh, they spend it on all these ridiculous endeavors. And, you right. know, the government treats our money like it's no big deal. And they, the, the bureaucratic system of government, is what's debasing the currency. The only reason that the Federal Reserve has to implement these phases of quantitative easing, which is nothing more than an economic fancy way of printing more money, that's all this is a fancy way of saying that, Correct. is because of the response by the government. Remember, if you look at the Federal Reserve Charter, and I know there's a lot of people that hate the Federal Reserve because they think it's some ambiguous boogeyman, but if you look at the Federal Reserve Charter, they are solely looked over upon by the government and the American people. And if the government and the American people are both embracing this idea of spending money that they don't have, not only do they not have, but their great, 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 great grandchildren don't have, well, the Federal Reserve's job is to somehow maneuver all these financial obligations that the government has basically put on the taxpayer and basically somehow continue to maneuver some kind of sound currency within this financial environment. And, I mean, the Federal Reserve has no power. I mean, it has no vested interest in continuously printing out money. I mean, the only reason that it's printing out money is because this government continues to spend it. And, and, right. and, and the, only, the, the only response that the Federal Reserve can do is somehow through money mechanics and fractional reserve banking and, and, and other things that probably haven't even been invented yet as far as the evolution of this type of Keynesian uh, economic theory is concerned – uh, they, they've got to somehow maneuver the, uh, the, the the currency to where it can still be somewhat sound uh, amidst this ridiculous spending spree of our government, man. Right, right. I wanted to uh, touch on the debt ceiling real quick, too, if I could. Go right ahead. Okay, so, I mean, the way I see it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I see it is, you know, if you look at a country as a, as a person, right, if you look at them as an individual, as a debtor, what it looks like to me is that America is, you know, taking taking one credit card and pay, using it to pay off the next every time we go deeper into debt. And instead of saying, okay, let let's let's turn this, you know, turn this garbage off and start paying back all this money that we borrowed, we're just borrowing more money to pay off the money that we owe on. Basically, the only thing we're doing is covering the interest while we're digging ourselves into a deeper ditch. And that's why really? our currency is. Absolutely. No, you've got the fundamentals absolutely correct. You see, it's that argument that's being brought forth by these teabaggers and these right-wingers uh, in an attempt to try to cut some of these entitlements. The problem is, is that they're false prophets. Uh, these assholes on the right are not cutting where we need to cut. I mean, how old are you, son? How old are you? Uh, around what age group? Uh, I'll be 27. Pretty quick here. I don't want to give an exact date. No, obviously. that's fine. That's <laughs> fine, man. No, don't worry about it. You're never going to see Social Security, and yet if you I have a job, yeah, if you have a job, you're going to continue to have Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare docked out of your pay, even though you're never going to see it. And who? Why is it continuing to be taken out of your check so that you can support the people that put us in this mess? 
And you see, the Republicans and the teabaggers do not want to cut Social Security. They don't want to cut Medicaid and Medicare. They don't want to cut any of this stuff. They they only want to cut, you know, nonsense that's purely cosmetic so that they can win over the votes of this contingent that believes in fiscal responsibility. That's why I'm saying I don't believe in any of these scumbags that are running for office today. And, and and as far as I'm concerned, if they really wanted to balance budgets, if they really wanted to, you know, uh, actually cut spending and, and raise revenues and actually attempt to bring down this particular deficit, uh, that we would be start, starting to talk about uh, Social Security cutting and, and, and Medicaid, Medicare. But you're not going to hear them say that because, uh, believe it or not, the only people that go out and vote, the only people that right. go out and vote are old people. Well, here here's the thing that really gets to me. If we cut those programs, we just – cut them shreds, people would have access to more of their tax dollars. And I'd like to, you know, put forth the uh, assertion that the tax dollars being taken amount to a hell of a lot more than an $800 or $900 a month Social Security payment. But we we believe, you know, I, I talked to one of my liberal friends about this recently, and she said, of course it was a she, she said that, well, people don't know how, people don't know how to save their money, and we have to protect the people that won't save their money. So the government makes them save their money, and then gives it back to them later. I mean, what the fuck kind of stupidity is that? Well, it, 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 it's stupid because, first of all, they save that money and they get no interest for it whatsoever, you know? Right. I mean, like, yeah, they get no interest for it. And are, are, is she talking about the poor people that get the money at the end of the year after getting it docked out of their pay, the people that make under whatever, 20000 or whatever it is? Is she speaking no, about them or, or just the general American populace? As as far as Social Security retirement is concerned, retirement, sir, retirement. Is what well, you know, uh, to, to be comper- to be perfectly honest with you, uh, Social Security was just a ridiculous bunch of nonsense when it was initiated during a precarious economic time in American history. It was put forth by this closet communist named Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who well, was conveniently <laughs> the only president to you know serve four terms in office. Well, the fourth term wasn't a full term. They, they, you know, he he conveniently died. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you know there's some nefarious black ops around that because the man would not step down. But this was the man that initiated this amongst a whole bunch of other type of socialistic communist ideas. I mean, you know, people need to remember that you know we were headed down this communist uh, uh, path. I mean, you know, Joseph Stalin was Time Magazine's uh, Man of the Year in 1945. Uh, you know, it's not it's no coincidence that you see uh you've got Franklin Delano Roosevelt out here uh, sitting next to Stalin as if they're chums, uh, you know, I mean this is not a coincidence here. And the only reason that this uh, you know, social security idea was initiated was to allocate more revenue for the bureaucratic government so that they can assert their power of authority. And that's exactly what's happened. When they accumulated all this revenue from taxpayers via Social Security, what did they do? The government used that big pool of money to go and grow the government bigger and and grow more government bureaucracy and, and, and grow more government infrastructure. That was purely the purpose of Social Security. Anybody who says it was because of this or because of that is an idiot. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, 110. percent I mean, because that's what happened, right? I mean, look, look. I don't know how many unfunded liabilities or unfunded uh, financial obligations are uh, being sourced. Their finances are being sourced by future revenues of the Social Security system. But it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And this is just pure socialism. It's pure communism. And when people talk about, you know, McCarthy being some fanatic about how he was just kind of, you know, uh, going off his keister about communism. He was absolutely correct. And I find it disgusting that we uh, read it in the history books that McCarthy was some kind of a schizophrenic, communistic, uh, you know, schizophrenic, or whatever the hell they try to label him as. He was a goddamn patriot, because he knew, as well as anybody else who was a capitalist, that these goddamn bureaucrats in Washington want communism, because it suits their power-driven idealism. Anybody who's in power today in Washington... Is a failure in the private sector. You know it, and I know it. Oh, I agree completely. Um, and that's why, and that's why they want to grow their power because they can't be a success in the private sector. So what they'll do is they'll be elected by a, you know a, a group of constituents that are just as ridiculous as he is or she is, 
gets elected and utilizes that power to grow their influence more and more. It just it makes me sick, man. It makes me sick, and that's why I'd rather have uh, private enterprise have more of an influence over our lives than the goddamn government. Anyway, man, I want to thank you very much for calling up. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. I want to talk. That's enough about the debt ceiling. I'm sick and tired of talking about these scumbags in Washington. They don't care about me. They don't care about you. They don't care about nobody. They're soulless cash whores, for Christ's sake. I want to talk about this. Uh, you know, t- changing subject matters here. Out here in Texas, folks. Uh, We've been having the worst drought in Texas history, but we're used to this type of stuff. We're not bitching and moaning. You know, we're not out here, oh, it's so hot out here in Texas. Oh, my God. We're badasses out here in Texas. Do you understand? I mean, we're badasses. We're not out here pissing and moaning. I mean, what was it? Austin, Texas had 100-degree weather. Felt like uh, the heat index was, what, 106, 107 degrees, baby. And you know what I was doing? I was taking a walk out there in that beautiful, hot-ass weather. Was I sweating? Yeah, who gives a crap if I'm sweating, baby? But, you know, uh, unlike, I guess, most of the people out here in this world, I take a bath. You know, I actually go out and bathe and take a shower. You know what I mean? I don't just, you know, uh, you know, sweat up like a goddamn disgusting sweat hog and, and, and just kind of go inside and wait for my goddamn sweat to dry off of my skin and then and, and try to go back outside and think that everything's... I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, Jesus Christ, for Christ's sake. Anyway, we're having a heat wave that's hitting over 30 states in America. 30 states are feeling this heat wave, not just Texas. All right? And believe it or not, we have 25 people that have died. All right? 25 people dying because it's too hot. Oh, it's so hot out here. Oh, we're dying because it's hot. Oh, oh. Are you kidding me? Where uh, people are dying because it's too freaking hot? I mean, is, is there a body of water you can dive into? You disgusting pricks! I mean, you know, could could you dive into a lake? I mean, you know, couldn't you take a bath? I mean, are there like ice machines on every freaking corner? For Christ's sake! I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm not bashing dead people, assholes. I just find it, uh, I mean, just a little bit unbelievable that people are dying because it's too hot outside. All right. It's too it's too hot outside, and they're dying, all right? I mean, they're dying, for Christ's sake. I mean, God damn it, go take a jump in the river. Go take a jump in the lake, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I'm just saying, man, take a bath. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I'm just saying, all right? I'm just saying. Okay, for some of the people that are having heat strokes out there, Maybe, just maybe, you shouldn't be going out there running and, you know, jogging about two or three miles in 105-degree weather, all right? I mean, maybe vanity should have taken a step back, and maybe you should have came out the pocket for a treadmill. Because, you know, I mean, Jesus Christ, there's nothing I hate worse than these freaking joggers out in the street. You know what I mean? I mean, these stupid joggers, you know, like we're supposed to really give a crap about these people. You know what they're doing? They're showing off their bodies to anybody who happens to be passing by in a nice car that wants to pick them up and give them a few bucks so they can pay next month's rent. That's what those people are. I kid you not. Haven't you noticed that? Anytime there's any kind of a fatty trying to run and trying to do some jogging, you got people yelling at them at the goddamn uh, off the side of the road, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? You got them yelling, hey, fatty, keep running. Keep running, fatty. Give me a break. I don't like it. I'm sorry, I don't like you joggers. You need to stay inside, all right? We got tracks. We got parks. I mean, my tax dollars are going to you know, fund these ridiculous parks out here, and you assholes don't even want to go and, and, and run your fat ass around it. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. I'm sick of this crap. Anyway, we got a heat wave going on, 25 people dead, you know, and I'm just saying, if you, if you were one of these people that are on the verge of dying because it's too hot out here, take a freaking bath, all right, please, take a freaking bath, for Christ's sake, Jesus Christ, right, you know what, and let's say, oh, I, I don't have any water, I, I don't have anything, well, why don't you get like 50 cents, go to one of those, uh, you know, corner stores that got one of those, like, you know, those air pumps, you know, those automatic air pumps they actually have a little water, a, a little 